as if there was some sort of artillery strike that took place uh, very close to where Marie and the French journalist Remy Ochlik were standing. There is video that's showing the rubble in the street very close to where their bodies were lying. And Marie was the kind of person who was obviously fully aware of the dangers that she was facing. She was an incredibly seasoned journalist. She'd been to just about every single war zone. She was someone who the entire journalistic community really looked up to, in many cases idolized. She had this phenomenal ability to take these atrocities that she was seeing, translating them into prose, into writing, fiercely determined to take these risks, to continue to shed light on what she believed were such critical issues, atrocities committed across the entire world. We are also hearing from activists that there are another two to three journalists who were wounded in that attack as well. They are desperately calling out, saying that they need to get them some sort of medical help. They need to somehow try to get these journalists outside of Syria because they too, like so many other Syrians that have fallen victim to these archives, shells that quite simply is not the medical capabilities inside the, the neighborhood of Baba Ahmed to get them the help that they need. Murray is also the kind of person who would want reporting on the other casualties that are taking place constantly in the neighborhood of Baba Ahmed, not to mention the nine civilians that activists are reporting were killed today, but also a citizen journalist, Rami El Sayyid, just 26 years old, one of those many individuals who go around at great risk filming what is taking place, uploading the videos to YouTube. He died of shrapnel wounds yesterday, just 26 years old, the father of a very young child, and he was killed while he was filming the deaths of four members of the same family. But this most certainly just goes to show you how indiscriminate the government's shelling of the neighborhood of Baba Ahmed is there. Arwa, you were just in Homs uh, covering the story. What's it like uh, being a reporter there and trying to get the story? Well, it's of course incredibly challenging because your movements are not just regulated by various government positions on tall buildings, sniper positions where they continuously fire on civilians, but your movements are also heavily regulated by this intense artillery shelling. And the issue is that you can't really determine where it's coming from because it is so widespread. In one instance, you can hear the shelling sounding like it's far away. The next moment, it's impacted the very building that you're standing in. But again, to go back to the journalists that were inside Baba Ahmed itself, these are all incredibly seasoned individuals. Everyone is always well aware of the risks that they are taking going into areas like this. And when it comes to someone like Marie, she was so passionate about what she was doing that she fully believed that those risks were well worth it, that it was that important to keep getting these types of stories out. From where you sit and, and from the people that you've talked to, what is it that they think would really pressure the Syrian government to change their behavior and, and the kind of scenes and images that we've been looking at? Well, a lot of people believe that if Russia and China were to pull their support from the Assad regime, it would isolate them even further. Iran, of course, a very strong ally. Should Iran somehow, although it's incredibly unlikely, pull its support for the Assad regime, that could be a game changer as well. But that is also why a lot of people are calling for military intervention, because they do not believe that this regime is actually going to collapse due to any sort of international pressure. And what we're seeing today is also highlighting the very reason why so many of the activists and now the Red Cross itself is also pushing for some sort of ceasefire to be able to establish these critical humanitarian corridors, because there's food shortages in many areas. Then there's also the severe shortage of medical care. A lot of the wounded are unable to get out. People are dying inside these major shift clinics because they cannot get the help that they need to be able to survive. A lot of people dying of wounds that they normally should not be dying of. But again, these are the circumstances that people have been dealing with inside Syria for months now.